Then she gave me a bag in which to put my sweater and purse. Before I could go any further, she took my temperature and recorded it on my health questionnaire. Then she pointed me to the restroom and told me to go wash my hands. When I came out of the restroom, I realized it wasn't my yearly wellness check, but my monthly haircut. These are indeed unusual times. A few weeks ago, um, a Lutheran friend of mine, who has been live streaming Worship at the Madeline and following our Wednesday choir meditations, said she had a Bible verse she wanted me to talk about during one of my weekly choir reflections. Today is that day, and this is the verse. From Romans 5, 3 to 5. Rejoice in suffering, because suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint. Because God has poured out his love for us, poured it into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. Now the Apostle Paul, author of much of the New Testament, is such a cheerleader for Jesus Christ and the Christian way of living. He is always giving us advice and encouragement as he tells us what we need to do to live a better life and what we need to do to reach a goal. In this verse from Romans 5, the goal is hope. Now, I don't know about you, but these burdensome days of 2020 have not only left me hug deprived, but also hope depleted. I need hugs and hope. And I need them now, and I'm out of patience and I'm tired of waiting. In these verses from Romans 5, St. Paul, who is familiar with the complaints of the early Christians, encourages us to live a joyous and triumphant life. He reminds us to take a look at the big picture, because as followers of Jesus Christ, we know how the story ends. It's the same with suffering. Yes. We are going through a time of suffering, but we can rejoice because it is not meaningless. We can look at it as part of God's purpose to make us stronger, to teach us to hang in there and persevere. It's part of God's plan to build character and help us become the fulfilled people we were created to be. When we reach that maturity, the final goal we will discover within ourselves that hope, who we thought was missing, has always been with us. Because it's a gift poured into our hearts with love from the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm particularly fond of that part of verse 5 which says, Hope will not disappoint. Because it's been my experience that when I wait patiently and put my trust in God, I usually, usually receive much more than that 
for which I had hoped. So go forward, my dear friends. Don't be afraid to rejoice in suffering. Persevere, grow in character, and most of all, live with hope. After all, we do know how the story ends. Be good to yourselves, find something to hope for, and then wait for God to surprise you. Love you and miss you. Madeline Choir and all who are watching. I have lost count as to how many choir reflections we have created these last few months. I think this is number 16. Boy, no wonder I'm so tired. This week, probably because I have been watching in horror the desecration of so many of our historical monuments, I've been thinking a lot about art and its significance in our life. Many of you know that Michael and I collect original artwork. Our home is surrounded with art by our favorite artists, friends from around the world. Each one has a story and gives us great joy and meaning in our life. They are, in fact, among our most prized possessions. One of our very first original pieces and also one of my most favorite paintings was done by our brother-in-law, Richard. What I love about Richard's paintings is that each one is an allegory. That is, it has several layers of meaning within it. This one is particularly meaningful to Michael and myself, not only because it was the beginning of our artistic collection, but because it represents the story of our married life. It is based upon John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches, which was the theme of our wedding and which Richard drew for Michael and myself for our wedding invitations. In the background is both the Duomo and Ponte Vecchio that are in Florence, Italy. Florence is one of our favorite cities. We love it for its artistic and musical contributions to our world, as well as its fashion and, of course, the food. As a married couple, it was also one of the first places that we traveled together so it is very special to us. Layered over the top, there is a vine with grapes wrapped around a solid black line that zigzags from the bottom to the top of the painting. By design, there is a definite beginning to that line, but the end stops just short of the top edge. That line represents the past, present, and future of our life together. Beyond that edge is eternity. Perhaps more obvious to the eye is the vine and branches, which are intertwined around that lifeline. Other than that black line, the colors are really vibrant and alive. And there you have it. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. Remain in me, and you shall be fruitful. Apart from me, you can do nothing. To me, it is a constant visual reminder of that scripture and how we are to live our married life. Of course, throughout history, great paintings, statues, and music in our Western civilization have always been far more than entertainment or mere decoration. They have represented life. For centuries, the church educated people about God through art and music. One has only to see the work of Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel in Rome, depicting heaven and hell, the frescoes of Giotto in the Basilica of St. Francis in Assisi, or the countless paintings of well-known and lesser-known artists throughout our Western world to understand that their work is truly divinely inspired. And so it is the same with great music. Any motet by Palestrina, Handel's Messiah, the Haydn creation, the Mozart Requiem, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, you name it, the list goes on and on, has definitely been touched by the hand of God. Closer to home, for us at the Madeline, the restoration of the old church is a perfect example. From the natural architectural acoustics to the beauty of the wooden beams and floors and the magnificent restored stained glass windows, the old church is a constant reminder to us that the hand of God helped to build this space over a hundred years ago. As further proof, when we sing or play in this space, there's no denying that it was divinely inspired. We hear it and we feel it. So it is clear to me that a world without great art and music, without culture, is truly a world that is without God. And so while what I've been seeing this last week is deeply disturbing to me on many levels. I have to believe that God will triumph over evil in the end, and he will restore art, music, and beauty in our troubled world. For whether it lies in the magnificent basilicas in Rome and Florence, the restored beauty of the old church, great choral masterpieces that we sing as a choir, or the beautiful artwork that surrounds Michael and I in our own home, I am reminded that it is only with God and through God's divine hand that we can create a world of beauty and life and restore peace and hope throughout our world. Have a good week, everyone. Stay tuned for our Zoom choir meeting next week. More recordings in the weeks to come and women, you're next. And enjoy the familiar faces you see on the video.
the world can give to me this hope I have. The world can give it to me. The world can give it. The world can't take it away. The world can give it. The world can't take it away. That's a cut. Good evening, everyone. Um, hope you're doing well. Uh, please join me in our choir prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless, O Lord, us, your people, who minister in your holy temple. Grant that what we sing with our lips, we may believe in our hearts, and what we believe in our hearts, we may show forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Stay well, everybody.